And in the moment, the producer said to me, oh, this is only one leg of the final. Like, get on the boat, save your energy, there are other legs. So let's jump right into it because I have so many questions. That was a wowzer of a final. Um, Desi, I got to start with you. All of the discourse I've been seeing, you know, about the final, there's been, you know, back and forth, but I think everyone can agree that you were pretty much robbed there. Um, so take me through that situation and how you felt. Yeah, yeah. The comment Rob Queen is like literally my favorite. I love when people say that. Um, I don't even know where to start. Like, I, because there were so many, like, it was such a yo-yo of emotions. First getting paired with Enzo, I was actually like, kind of happy to get him out of the way. I think we all expected Enzo to quit at some point in the final because we've seen him quit on a daily challenge. We knew that we, he had like a quitter's mentality somewhere in him, but there was no part of me that thought he would quit on the first leg of the final after fighting so hard for so long to get to the final. So I was like, oh, if I get past this, like I'm going to win the final. Like that's literally in my head, I was like, we're going to do this and we, we're not going to come in first place, but that's fine because I'm going to have great partners from here on out. Um, so when we jump into the water and I didn't even know until watching it back that it took Enzo, like he was delayed, that delayed jumping into the water and he started freaking out. I, yeah, just saw like the money just being ripped away from me. Um, and I tried everything. I mean, I told him to grab my foot. I'll swim us to shore. I told him, think about your dad, think about your kids and he was just in such a state of panic that he was physically pushing me away. He was cussing at me. He was telling me he took a swim lesson. So he was fine. Don't worry about him. But obviously I needed to be worried. So it was devastating, devastating the moment, devastating to watch it back again. Yeah. But, you know, and looking back at, you know, the rest of the final, how do you think that you would have done with it? Yeah. I mean, you know, at this point I'm in a hotel room in a hot, you know, in a, in a bathtub. Um, but I, I like to think that I wouldn't have quit. Like there's nothing that I've ever quit on. Um, I literally went into this final saying a mantra in my head. If I'm not dead, I can keep going. Cause I watched TJ's finals. I know that there's like going to be that point where you want to quit. So I had said this mantra over and over again for days. If I'm not dead, I will not quit. I can keep going. Um, so I like to think that I would have done just that. Like, unless I literally was on my deathbed, I would have kept going with that mountain, but easier to say that on this side than in the moment. Right. And Alyssa too, you know, you were so close to getting to that final. So what was it like to watch that final on TV? What were your thoughts on it? Some of the decisions were, um, people are really talking about them. So what are your thoughts on it? I did not watch the episode yet. Oh, okay. Uh, it was between going to get ramen or watching the episode. I kind of chose going to get ramen <laughs> and I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> um, but what I've heard about it and talking with people that did the final, um, Desi and I talked about on the other interviews on Big Brother, you know, they tell you every rule, every aspect, every outline of any possibility. If you time out, this is the amount of time. If, um, you know, questions are answered no matter what and they won't start it unless you know everything and you say like, you know, everything. So a lot of the times on the dailies, there was questions unanswered. They would say, you'll figure, you'll find out. Um, we didn't know what tiebreakers would be. We didn't know things that you should know. It was almost like they didn't even know. Um, so I was, I was hoping at least for the final, they would be a little more organized in that aspect of it. But it does suck to hear that certain things were timed out. Certain things weren't, certain rules weren't really addressed. Um, so it's kind of annoying, honestly. Yes, definitely. And, you know, jumping off that point, actually, I did see um, James Wallington from earlier on in the season from Amazing Race. He tweeted something pretty interesting to me. Um, he said, this final is indicative to how the entire experience was so, for so many of us, I'll say that much. Um, what is your take on that? Do you think there's any truth to that? Um, yeah, I think kind of Alyssa just sort of mentioned it. Yeah we, yeah, we all come from shows where the rules are very black and white, cut and dry, questions are answered. Mm -hmm there is no gray area and there was a lot of gray area in, in, in this show um so yeah I think that it happened like this in the final was disappointing but it, it didn't shock me and I think we I knew going into the final like rules could change any time so let me give them no reason to disqualify me or right. let me give them no reason for there to be any doubt because if there's doubt like it could go either way mm -hmm. but 
you know, was there any conversation too about, you know, maybe you getting to continue on in the final as a solo competitor or maybe even paired with another woman during that final? Was that maybe something going on when you did get the DQ? So actually when this happened, like Enzo was climbing on the boat and I was like, I don't want to like, just let me swim to shore for my own self dignity. Like that's like, I literally asked the producer that. And in the moment, the producer said to me, oh, this is only one leg of the final, like get on the boat, save your energy. There are other legs. So mm -hmm. I was confused. I was like, well, maybe they changed the rules. Cause that wouldn't be that crazy. So I was like, okay, well, then I guess I'll get on the boat and I, I get to keep going. So they take us to shore, we get off the boat, and then she's like, oh, actually I had it wrong. You are disqualified, which is what I thought it was initially, which is why I was pleading so hard. Um, so yeah, there was a little bit, there's obviously a little bit of confusion there. Um, and yeah, I mean, there were other cameramen and producers that were like, we tried to get it so you could keep going and be partnered with a female. But at the end of the day, I think it was all happening so quickly and they were behind schedule and you know, a lot of elements happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so disappointing to hear though. I mean, I agree with so many people in saying, you know, the Rob Queen, you know, it was just so devastating to see. And it was devastating to see all of like the quitting happened and, you know, it play out how it was because I really was enjoying the season. I, th I thought it was a great season. Um, so many exciting moments there and, you know, um, there's so much to talk about the final, but I do also want to talk about, you know, the rest of the season as well. Um, Alyssa, I've been dying to ask you questions about, you know, the whole cookout situation for the whole season now, and I'm not going to waste this time here. Um, so there was, you know, you did go against Xavier there towards the beginning of the season, put him in there. So I wanted to know, you know, looking back, the whole season's done, months have passed. Um, how do you look back on that situation now? And I also want to know, how, are you in contact with Xavier now? What's the status of that friendship? Oh, this interview is a juicy one. Okay. <laughs> um, for me going in, um, you know, this is six months after Big Brother. This isn't years. This isn't two years. This isn't five years. This is six months. I almost, I turn it down at first because of that. Um, okay. Going into it, you're with not one or two people from your season, five other people. It felt like I was back in that game again. It was to the point where they would tell me, even Derek would tell me things. I just didn't want to trust anybody. Like the thought of getting got again by someone that you trust was like my biggest fear because I got got so easily. Um, so my, uh, my alert was on 24 seven. I will say when it came to the revenge aspect, it was strictly a game term for me. Um, you know, if a team beats you in this, in this elimination or this game, you want to get them back. You want you, you know, they say that in sports on ESPN, you know, they're coming for revenge on this team. That's how I interpreted it. It was never deeper than that. Anytime I ever talked to anyone in the house about what the cookout did, I explained exactly why they did it, what they did, how excited I was for it. I was the main advocate about it. Even when X took me out, him and the one person that lied to me the most in the house, that's who I wanted to win the game because I don't take the game personally. Going into a game six months later, I love you as a friend, but I'm not gonna trust you again for the amount of time I did. Um, going in also, I was very aware that Big Brother came in very hot um, and a lot pushed a lot of people away. People didn't really trust Big Brother, especially BB23. Um, I knew I was at the bottom of BB23. I knew Tiffany would always choose Aza over me. They showed that in episode two. I knew Kylan would choose Tiffany over me. I knew Aza would choose Tiffany over me. I knew that I was at the bottom as far as the girl side and I needed to be somewhere where I was at the top instead. And I can have all this talk, like I'm not with Big Brother, I'm not with BB23, but until I make a move that shows that, no one's really gonna believe it, especially Big Brother. Nobody believed Big Brother. Um, so making that move was more strategic. I always still kind of felt like X's sidekick in there. I never felt like I was an ally he needed. Um, we only talked game was with, I brought it up and he'd be like, oh, I have it handled or I already knew that. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm playing a game too. Um, so I really want to show that I'm playing my own game. And as soon as I took X out, no one was upset by it as far as Survivor or The Amazing Race or Love Island, like, oh, we don't trust her. It was almost like I had more conversations with people. Survivor taught, started talking anymore. Love Island did, Amazing Race did. I had so many more alliances outside of it. And I really do think that move helped me get to how far I got. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't regret doing it. And the only reason why I didn't make the final was from one single vote. 
Right. So for anyone to say, oh, if she would have kept X, she, he would have helped her. I don't need help. I, I want to make my own decisions. And that got me to where I got, I feel like so. That makes so much sense. As I hear you describe that right now, it puts a different perspective on the whole situation there. And I think for a lot of people, it will. Um, and Desi, I noticed that you were nodding your head for a lot of that, for um, maybe there was this stigma against the big brother people going into it. And towards the beginning, we did have the survivor strong there. So was that kind of the vibe in the house, in your opinion? I mean, the vibe in the house was like, for me, I've, I've actually never watched Big Brother, but I was like, something's not right with these Big Brother people. Like, <laughs> not right. like I don't trust any of them. They all got to go, in my opinion. Um, so when they started taking each other out, I was like, this is even better. Like, we don't even have to do the work. They're handling it for us. So, but I do think that that move for Alyssa changed her trajectory in the game. Cause I think she would have gone out way sooner had she not made that decision. And it was a big, it was a big, bold, risky move, but right. I do think it completely changed her tra trajectory in the game. hundred percent. And I mean, it's always like hindsight is 2020. So you can never tell like butterfly effect if X was there, like there's no telling that you would have actually made the final. So it's hard to say like, I really made it right before the final. Yeah. yeah. I'm very I proud of how I did and X staying or going, it wouldn't have changed how great I did. So, right. Yeah. And, you know, as we're winding down here, I also want to know, you know, looking back on the entire season and the experience um, from both of you, what are you taking away from the show? Are you walking away with any regrets or anything that you do want to get off your chest here? This is your chance to do so. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have zero regrets from the game. I don't think there's anything I could have done better or different. Um, I will say, I feel like I walked away from this show a much better, more confident woman than I walked in. Um, even though I am like pretty physically fit, I came into the show terrified because of my past experience on reality TV. Like mm -hmm. I know people are cutthroat. I am not a cutthroat person. I am very loyal and hardworking and I keep my head down. Um, but I feel like over the course of this season, I went from feeling like I was a fish out of water to by the time I got to the final, truly feeling like I deserve to be there and like I was going to win this game. Um, and I think just the, the increase in confidence and like, I remember Angela telling me like week two that her, her the, bet, the thing she liked about herself the most is that she literally knew that anything she put her mind to, she could do. And I was like, hmm do I feel that way about myself? And I didn't, but I think by the time I finished this game, I had that level of confidence. And I feel like if I never go on a reality show again, that's something that I will take with me. Um, and I'm so grateful to have had this opportunity to gain that. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, and Alyssa, what about you? I mean, for me, I definitely went in, you know, I'm, I'm tinier. I'm, I'm not this big muscular person or physically, like you can look at me and you're like, oh, she's a good competitor. I'm sure people looked at me and they're like, she's going to not do well. Um, so I was very insecure going in. I was really nervous and I just didn't want the way I look physically going to make people not want to like work with me or compete with me. And I really feel like I proved myself. I, never really was close to last in any of the dailies except a car one. Um, so I'm really, really proud of myself. And I felt like I accomplished so much goals that I didn't think I could do. I mean, I was terrified to even go on a roller coaster before the challenge. So the fact that I did all these dailies and I wasn't scared, I wasn't nervous. I didn't really get a lot of anxiety like I did on Big Brother. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so proud of how I did. And I don't regret anything I did because I made it right before then. And I, I'm ha I, I left very, very happy. I was, I was totally okay when, when I left, like, I wasn't like, oh, damn, I should have done this. Like I was just, I was really proud of myself. Oh, that's amazing to hear. And I mean, that elimination though, too, was emotional for me to even watch. I was like, oh my gosh, like, how is this? Like when I'm watching these shows, I'm like, how am I like getting emotional over these things? But it's, I love the challenge so much. So you guys made it a great show. So Thank you. Can't help it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. And I'll be looking forward to maybe if you're on season two, I don't know, but thank you guys so much for taking the time.